I'm Roman Yossi of the National Predator. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Zoni. And before we get to the no half step in hockey coverage, first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you learn everything you need to know about the show. Once you get educated about the show, that's when you can click on that merchandise tab. Let's take it straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you've come to know and love and expect from the Renegades of Puck are still available on our online store, whether that's socks, throw pillows, wall arts, bed sets, or so many other items. We've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is of critical importance to this operation, so listen up, Renegades. Here's how you can support the cause. It doesn't cost you a thing. It only takes you about a second, but it goes a long way to helping out this operation right here. You can find us on Threads. Not a lot of people have found us there so far, but we're working on it. You can also find us on X, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, so please give us a follow along on any or all of those social media platforms today. You can find us on YouTube, and we sure would appreciate a few more subscribers on YouTube. So please pass those links around and help us out right there. Just search Renegades of Puck on YouTube today, and you'll find our channel right there. Game previews, game recaps, breakdowns, full episodes of Renegades of Puck TV. It's all right there on our YouTube channel. The audio version of the podcast is doing incredible. From local to global in the year 2023, thanks to the Full Press Predators podcast and the Full Press NHL Network, approaching 7 million downloads. Downloads and replays for the year 2023. Stick taps love and respect to everybody for checking out the podcast. Search Renegades of Puck in your preferred platform today. Venmo, that's how you can help support the Renegades of Puck financially. You can make a donation. We're always accepting donations. Thanks to Generous Renegades, just like you watching and viewing right now, we've been able to upgrade a lot behind the scenes. If you're following along on our social media, you saw the picture of our brand new technology setup, our brand new computer system, our brand new docking station, all of these things that we've been able to add. Thanks to Generous Renegades, just like you. So again, scan the QR code that's currently on your screen or just search Renegades of Puck on Venmo today. Now listen. I am absolutely aware it's time for the no-half stuff in hockey cover, so let me deliver the goods. It's time for operation number 831. That's right. It's time for show number 831. And at this moment in hockey history, the National Predators currently found themselves in sixth place in the Central Division after 25 games skated. The Nashville Predators are over 500 with a record of 13 and 12, 26 points, has them eight points shy of the first place Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche have 34 points and the record of 16, 7 and 2. And before we get into the next Predators matchup, let's talk about the Central Division, its most updated standings. Right now, the Avs lead in first place with 34 points. The Dallas Stars are still in second place with 31 points, but they've skated in two fewer games now than the Colorado Avalanche. The Winnipeg Jets have skated in 24 games of 30 points or in third place. The Arizona Coyotes have 28 points after 24 games skated, and they are in fourth place. And you'll find the St. Louis Blues with 27 points in fifth. The Preds with 26 points in sixth. The Minnesota Wild with 22 points in seventh. And the Chicago Blackhawks have 15 points, and they are in eighth place. So you can see it is quite jumbled up. Up right there from second place all the way down to sixth place in the division, only separated by five total points. So quite the logjam currently in the Central Division. The National Predators on home ice, which is where their next game will take place. They have a record of eight and six on the season. They've scored 80 goals in total this season. They've given up 80 goals in total on the season. That makes the number nice and even, nice and symmetrical. Very easy to figure out. Once the National Predators wrap up this next game uh, against the Tampa Bay Lightning, they will have another back-to-back coming up on the weekend. Saturday in Toronto, Sunday in Montreal, Tuesday back home for another one-night stand against the Philadelphia Flyers. And on the 15th of December in Carolina before coming back home into Bridgestone Arena on the 16th to play the Washington Capitals. So two more back-to-backs in the next six games for this Nashville Predators team. Now, it is the second of two regular season meetings for the Nashville Predators and the Tampa Bay Lightning. They open the season against each other back on October the 10th. It was the Nashville Predators falling in Tampa 5-3. UC Soros got the start, took the loss, going 29 out of 33. Your goal scorers for the Nashville Predators were Tommy Novak, Ryan O'Reilly, and Yuso Parson. And Kucherov scored two for Tampa. Paul added the other two for Tampa, plus he had an assist for three points in that game. Now, the Nashville Predators do have some injuries Injuries to be updated upon. Cole Smith is the most recent injury out with illness listed as day-to-day. Alex Carey, week-to-week. Glass Novak still on injured reserve. No time frame 
for their return. Now, more about this Tampa Bay Lightning team. Let's get into it since we haven't seen them since the opening day of the season. Overall on the season, you may be surprised. Their record not so stellar. Only 11, 10, and 5. That's good for fifth in the Atlantic Division. Four, seven, and two is their road record. They've scored 87 goals on the season, and they have given up 93 goals on the season. That's a goal differential of minus six in their most recent stretch of action. Let's go back five games, and there's one more caveat at the end of this. On the 27th of November, it was a 4-1 to loss at the Colorado Avalanche. On the 28th, back-to-back here, a 3-1 to loss at the Arizona Coyotes. Followed up on November the 30th, closing out the month with a 4-2 to loss versus Pittsburgh. Then on the 2nd of December, an 8-1 to loss at the Dallas Stars. Now, their most recent game was a 4 to nothing victory versus the Dallas Stars, but their most recent game is actually going to take place on Wednesday versus the Pittsburgh Penguins before they will head into Nashville. So a home game against the Pittsburgh Penguins, then traveling to Nashville to face off against the Nashville Predators. That should help and aid the Nashville Predators, hopefully, with some weary Tampa Bay legs coming into Bridgestone Arena. Let's talk about the matchup. Let's talk about the rankings, where we stand right now with the current numbers in the NHL. In the goals for category, the National Predators are at 3.16 overall goals per game. That's 17th best in the NHL. In the goals for category, the Tampa Bay Lightning are 3.35 per game. That's 10th overall in the NHL. Goals against the National Predators are also at 3.16. They've scored 80. They've given up 80 on the season. That is 16th overall in the NHL. Goals against category for the Tampa Bay Lightning, 3.58. That number, quite surprising. 28th in the NHL, 3.58 goals against per game. That is an extremely high number. In the shots for category, National Predators generating 31.1 on net per game. That's 15th best in the NHL. The Tampa Bay Lightning are generating 30.7. That is 17th in the shots against category. Let's go over the Preds side again. 30.2 shots on against per game is 14th in the league, while the Tampa Bay Lightning are giving up 30.9 per game. That's 20th in the league. Now, special teams, not going to be a surprise here to see the Tampa Bay is ahead in both of these statistical categories on the power play. Tampa Bay is converting at 31% on the season. That's second best in the NHL, 27 con- Conversions on 87 opportunities. National Purse 19.8% respectable. 16th in the NHL, only 19 out of 96, though. On the penalty kill unit, very much the same for Tampa Bay. 2.9% kill rates, 11th best in the NHL. 13 power play goals against is a really good number for this point in the season. While the Nashville Purs have a 73.7 kill rate, 27th overall in the NHL, and they have given up 26 power play goals on the season. That, again, is an incredibly high number when it comes to the individual statistics for these Nashville Predators and Tampa Bay Lightning players let's start on the visiting side let's start with Tampa Bay Kucherov 16 goals 26 assists both of those numbers are leading in both of those categories 42 total points leads in Tampa Bay Lightning scoring point 12 and 18 for 30 Stamkos 10 and 15 for 25 Victor Hedman 5 goals 20 assists for 25 points and Hagel 10 goals 13 assists for 23 points and Kucherov had two goals uh, against the Nashville Predators when they played in the opening day of the season out of his 16 that he has scored at this point in time. Let's talk about the National Predators top scorers. Philip Forsberg, 13 goals now, 16 assists, 29 points. He's the leader in every single one of those categories. O'Reilly has 12 goals, though, right on Forsberg's heels. Plus 10 assists and that equals 22 points. The captain Romeo is at 5 goals and 13 assists for 18 points. Gus Nyquist is at 3 goals and 14 assists for 17 points. Really nice season so far for Nyquist in his first year with the Preds. And Luke Evangelista, 4 goals and 10 assists for 14 points on the season. Your anticipated goaltending matchup in numbers, UC Saros and Net for the Nashville Purge against Stamp Bay Lightning. 10, 10, and 0 on the season. A 900 percentage, 3.03 goals against average. The record certainly looking better than it was, and the numbers improving, but still room to grow for UC Saros on the season. Vasilevsky, 2-3-0, and coming back from injury, just getting tuned up. An 8-8-7 save percentage of 3.03 goals against average. Those numbers are not where you would expect them to be, but Vasilevsky has a long history against this national first team and has always performed at a very, very high level against this Nashville Purs team. That's going to get you all set up for the Nashville Purs and the Tampa Bay Lightning at Bridgestone Arena. It's a one-night stand. The Preds coming back home after a successful two-game road trip. Now they'll play one game at home before heading back out on the road for a weekend back-to-back in Toronto and Montreal. We've got to get to the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We've got to go back and find out what happened between the Nashville Predators and the Chicago Blackhawks. The Preds' second game of its two-game road trip. Let's go back and check it out. So the Rebirth Sports full game recap is coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. 
Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to December the 5th, the year 2023, when the Nashville Purs were in Chicago to take on the Blackhawks. Head coach Andrew Burnett deployed his line combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, Nyquist, Sherwood, Parson, Evangelista, Trennan, Sissons, Jankowski, McCarron, and Tomasino, which means we have 11 forwards and 7D again. Yossi and McDonough lose on in Fabro, Stastny and Barry. Luke Shen is your 7th defenseman. UC Soros gets the start in net for the next. Nashville Predators. At 108 of the first period, it's Soderblom coming up with a save on Sherwood. It's the first shot on goal of the game. At 252 of the first period, it's Soderblom coming up with a save on Forsberg in close range. At 329 of the first period, it is Donato hitting the post off of the rush at 432. Soderblom back to work coming with a save on Sherwood. Sherwood's second shot on goal already in this game. At 557 of the first period, we've got our scoring breakthrough. First goal of the game goes to Chicago Blackhawks as Felino gets his third of the season. He brings the jam at the post, and the puck rolls up and over. You see Soros hits the post, hits Soros, hits the crossbar, hits Soros, then trickles down in and over the goal line. Good goal for the Chicago Blackhawks. Felino had a perfect view of it as he was bringing the jam right there from the side of the net. Chicago leads 1-0 here in the first period. 728 of the first, it's Soderblom coming with a save on Nyquist at 945. You see Soros come with a save on Tenorti from long range. At 1043 of the period, you see Soros come with a save on Jones plus his rebound follow-up lightning quick kick out on this play at 12.02 of the first Soda Bloom comes with a save on Yossi who was crashing the slot hard great scoring chance for the Predators right there 14.03 of the first period it's Soda Bloom coming with a save on McCarron then at 15.22 another save on Barry zero whistles for nearly five minutes to end the first period also um, oh, no shots on goal uh, National Predators outshoot the Chicago Blackhawks over the course of the first period 11-6 we go to the clean sheet in the second period, 137 in, and it's UC Saros coming up with a save on Kurashev at 211 of the second period. It's Luke Evangelista breaking through for the Nashville Purs, tying this game up at one apiece. It's Evangelista's fourth goal of the season. It was a rebound put back. Barry put the long shot on net. Evangelista got a deflection on it, then got to the loose puck first and puts it into the wide open net. Evangelista's fourth goal of the game ties this game up at one apiece at 237. So just seconds later, it's Mark Jankowski's first goal of the season. A rebound put back of Sisson's shot basically got the puck in the same exact location as Evangelista and put the puck into almost the same exact spot as Evangelista. 2-1 two, two, now in favor of the Nashville Purs. Lightning quick scores for the Preds, but at 3:09, just as quickly Dickinson gets the game tied up at two apiece. His eighth goal of the season gives the Chicago Blackhawks their second goal of the game. So now we're tied at two apiece at 3:09 of the second period after seeing virtually nothing happen in the first period and almost no whistles at the end of the period now it is just an onslaught of offense that Dickinson goal was blocker side wrist shot there was some traffic definitely involved in the play 432 of the second period and Tusi Saros coming up with a save on Gutman, 520 of the second period. Felino, his fourth goal, second of the game, fourth on the season. It's a wrist shot that beats Tusi Saros. Now the Blackhawks suddenly lead 3-2, to two, a crazy roller coaster for the first five minutes of this second period. 725 of the second hit. Soderblom coming up with a save on Sissons. Tip in the low slot, an outstanding save and a great scoring chance. You know what? Good hockey all around by everybody involved in that play. Impressive stuff right there by Soderblom and by Sissons. 829 of the second period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Forsberg at 927. Tomasino is off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. And yes, we're all the way at 927 of the second period. And it's our first penalty call of the game. UC Saros would come up with a save on Seth Jones. And overall, over the course of the two minutes, National Predators would have a very strong penalty kill against the Chicago Blackhawks power play. At 12-14 of the second period, Tenorti now off to the box. Two minutes for tripping on Luke Evangelista. Evangelista using the Roman Yossi wheel play to earn this power play for his National Predators team. And it is the Nashville Predators converting on their first power play opportunity of the game. It's O'Reilly's 12th goal of the season, tying the game up at three apiece. It was a rebound backhand put back of Forsberg's initial shot. O'Reilly 
bringing the jam as he always does around the net, putting the rebound back in his 12th season ties the game up three apiece. We go to the 15-24 mark of the second period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Forsberg at 16-17 of the second period. It's Reichel off the box. Two minutes, four hooking. You would never have known the Nashville Predators were on the power play if there wasn't a clock counting it down on the screen. No shots on goal for the Prince, barely any zone time, and honestly, it didn't seem like the Blackhawks were shorthanded at any point in time. So the Blackhawks did give up a power play goal on the previous Preds power play, but they were incredibly strong and basically put up a technically perfect penalty kill against the Predators here at the 16-17 to the 18-17 mark of the second period. 18-56 of the second, back to 5-5 five and five hockey, and Susie Sars come up with a save on Kirsch. Have it 19-16. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Nyquist. We hit the end of a wacky roller coaster ride of a second period. The Nashville Predators have 25 shots on goal now, 14 in the second period. The Blackhawks have 17, so 11. 14 to 11 were the shots on goal in the second period. Incredibly high shot volume, incredible amount of offensive output. 24 seconds into the third period now. It's UC Saros coming up with a save on Anderson at the 116 mark of the third. It's Saros coming up with a save on Korchinski at 352. UC Saros coming up with a save on Vlasic at 603 of the third period. UC Saros coming up with a save on Donato plus the follow up rebound opportunity. And here we are at 833, and it's UC Saros coming up with another save, this time on Gutman. Notice I haven't mentioned uh, anything other than UC Saros coming up with saves at this point in the game because at the 10 minute mark, the middle of the third period, in a tied game, in a 3 3 hockey game, the Nashville Predators have yet to generate a single shot on goal in this third period. UC Saros keeping the Nashville Predators in with six saves over the course of the first 10 minutes, 11.45 into the third period. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on Tomasino after an incredible soccer type play by Michael McCarron to keep the play alive, getting the shot for Tomasino, the first shot on goal for the Nashville Predators. It comes at 11.45 of the third period. At 12.41 of the third, it's Soderblom coming up with a save on O'Reilly. The rebound by Nike trickles just wide of the post just like the way Felino scored earlier in this game we saw Nyquist almost get the puck to roll up and over the top of Soderblom but this time it rolls over his body and then wide of the post national purse a glorious opportunity 1323 here over the third Saros comes up with a save on Radish off of the rush the ref took a sick bump while the play was developing managed to recover get up and be there to blow the whistle in time and see Uzi Saros come up with a save is really good scoring opportunity by Radish off of the rush ref taking a bump aside 1441 of the third period it's Soderblom coming over the save on Nyquist 1452 Forsberg off to the box two minutes for holding no matter how much he protested there was no way he was going to get overturned on this call Saros comes over the save on Radish's redirect in the slot this is exactly how the New York Rangers cashed in on their power play over the weekend against the Preds and this time UC Saros was able to stop this one Radish's redirect in the slot stopped by UC Saros 1704 of the third Saros comes over the save on Felino at 1823. Soderblom with one more save on McDonough. We hit the end of regulation with each team earning a point. Now, something a weird caveat about these two teams. These were the only two teams in the Central Division that did not have an overtime or shootout loss. One of them will now be suffering that. We go into the three-on-three -three overtime, and we are 120 into that overtime session. UC Saros is coming up with a save on Connor Bedard, who seemed like he never left the ice during this overtime. 4.09 of the of the overtime session. It's Soderblom coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. The teams were going up and down the ice, but this was one of your less offensive outputs for this three-on-three -three overtime type session. 417 Saros comes up with a really strong save on Connor Bedard, and that would do it for the shots on goal in the overtime session for the game. National Purs would outshoot the Chicago Blackhawks 30 to 28, but we still have a shootout to go. Nyquist would go first for the Nashville Purs. He'd use the slow and low approach, go to the left, come on in, cut across the top, and easily score. On this opportunity right here on Soderblom, one nothing Nashville Purs in the shootout. Bedard goes first for the Blackhawks. He hits the wrist shot glove side and just made it look as easy as possible. 1-1 one, one now. O'Reilly goes second for the Preds. He hits the slow backhand. 2-1 now in favor of the Nashville Predators. Johnson is stopped by UC Saros. Philip Forsberg goes backhand high as well from the other side. Makes it 3-1 and wins the shootout for the Nashville Predators. Predators officially win the game 4-3. They outshoot the Blackhawks 32-28.
And for the Nashville Predators, uh, this was kind of a wild road game, but one of those where they found a way to get it done. They found a way to get two points in this game. Uh, there were moments where it looked like this game might slip away from the Preds in the second period, but they were able to maintain some discipline, some professionalism, come out, force overtime. doesn't matter if the Blackhawks get a point in this one. It's not going to really affect the Nashville Predators. The Predators are able to get the extra point. Now 2-0 and against the Blackhawks on season, as they should be, picking up two road wins in a row to close out this very quick road trip. Next game will be back home against Tampa Bay. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. A boring first period, an incredibly amazing second period, a kind of slow third period, a pretty good overtime, and a really good shootout. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We'll be right back on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner-operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant, Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar-inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck podcast. UC Soros in this game, 25 out of 28. Not a very high workload or work volume. Three goals against. Uh, And the most important thing is he was one save better than Soderblom in this game. And he was good enough in the shootout. He got the job done. But let's face it, UC Soros has certainly played better games his last game. He completely stole the show and got the National Purse two points. But this time, not able to do so uh, against the Blackhawks. But he was one save better than the opposition. So he gets the victory and he gets out of Chicago with that team win overall. Let's talk about Ryan O'Reilly. One goal. It's his 12th season. Second on the team in scoring four goals. Fantastic since calling himself out against the New York Rangers. Uh, you had you heard the comments and he talked about how he was underperforming and then he's come out now in the last two games in Buffalo and now against Chicago and he's performed at an incredibly high level. O'Reilly also chipping in two shots a goal. 19.58 in time on ice. A minute 44 on the power play. 132 shorthanded time on ice. And again, I like every Everything about Ryan O'Reilly's game. I like the way he goes about it, and he is certainly uh, one of the more high-skilled players in this league around the net right now. There, there's a handful of them, and the way they get the job done around the net, but O'Reilly's up there in that conversation with Kreider and the the others that are so capable right there around the net. Luke Evangelista scored a goal in this game. Now he has 14 points on the season, and the goal was great. Going to the net, going to the hard areas, getting a rebound, putting it back in, not missing when he had his opportunity, and his 14 points are fifth on the Nashville Predators in scoring, and he outperformed Bedard in this game. Everybody was watching Bedard. Everybody keeps their eyes on the number one overall pick every time he's out there on the rink. But Luke Evangelista, who's second in rookie scoring and probably not going to win the rookie scoring race and probably not going to win the Calder Trophy, but Luke Evangelista, it would not be unreasonable to think that he could be a Calder finalist this year. He outperformed Connor Bedard in this particular matchup. Bedard's shootout uh, attempt, though, end goal was pretty sweet, but it did not help the Blackhawks win. Luke Evangelista's goal in the game did ultimately help the Nashville Predators get to overtime, which got them the shootout, which helped them win when Philip Forsberg scored. So Evangelista now 14 points on the season after picking up that goal. Jankowski picked up a goal in this game, and he's earning more time. I talked about after last game that Jankowski looked like he was one of the only predators with those legs under him in the Buffalo game, and I thought that he deserved to get more games. Well, now he's earning that time. He is outperforming anything that Liam Foody was doing in the lineup, and Mark Jankowski is a veteran that brings a lot of sandpaper grit and grind and jam to the game. So I think Jankowski is earning more ice time uh, for this national first team, and Andrew Burnett has to like what he's seeing out of him so far. Jankowski, again, another goal going to the net, going hard and getting a rebound and putting it into the net. The National Purr was just 
all over the rebound situation tonight. Soderblom was giving up rebounds all over the place, huge rebounds and leaving a wide open net. O'Reilly, Evangelista, Jankowski all able to capitalize with those good greasy rebound goals. Let's talk about Philip Forsberg because he got it done in the shootout with the game winner. That was one awesome backhander. He also picked up an assist in the game in regulation, five shots on goal. And it's just an incredible 25 games since the season starts. He's got 29 points. He's been above a point per game pace and scoring all season long. And he's doing an incredible job. This is easily one of his best performances over the first 25 games of a season that he's had in his entire career. And he gets the job done for the Nashville Predators in the shootout. He gets the anchor position at number three and he goes and converts. And that ended the game right there. So the shootout game winning goal for Philip Forsberg in this game closed things out. And again, Philip Forsberg has just been incredible through the first 25 games of the season. He's truly a remarkable offensively gifted player to watch. And he's putting it together consistently so far this season still on pace potentially for a 40 goal season 100 point season of course a 100 point season has never been accomplished by anyone in Nashville Predators franchise history that's gonna do it for the analysis portion of things we got the good cold hard numbers coming up we got the box score we got Brian Bassett and we got an interesting Barry situation Barry versus Barry we'll close on that note because that's going to take a moment to discuss but let's hear from Stripe Digital and some of our other friends right here let's take a quick break on the Renegades of Puck podcast back right after this the digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in. Let's get to the box score. Your goal scorers for the Nashville Purs, Luke Evangelista, Mark Jankowski, Ryan O'Reilly, your three goal scores. Of course, Philip Forsberg scores in the shootout to clinch the game, get the extra point for the Nashville Purs, but that doesn't go into the box score on the assist side of things. Philip Forsberg does pick up an assist. Parson picks up an assist. Sissons picks up one. Barry Fabro and Yossi on the defensive side all pick up assists. Great to see that the Nashville Purs defenseman chipping back in after not having a point against the Buffalo Sabres. Five shots on goal for Philip Forsberg. Four shots on goal for Sherwood early in the game, especially Sherwood was one of the most noticeable predators helping set the tone for the Preds when they were having some troubles finding any type of pacing early in the game. When it comes to the block shots category, Roman Yossi with five in this game. Two was the next highest number, Fabro and Stassi. Nobody else with more than two. So the captain, Roman Yossi, really selling out and blocking five shots in this game. When it comes to the physical components of the game, Luzon had five hits. It's becoming a customary number for him to put up a nice crooked number in the hits category. Luke Shen also chipped in with four. So while Shen continues not to be the best defensively out there, he does continue laying the physical hits all over the rink. When it comes to the time on ice leaders, it was 2012 was your top for the forwards. And it was actually Yakov trying to end Philip Forsberg with exactly the same time on ice. 2012, Ryan O'Reilly, I can't believe, stayed under 20 minutes at 1958. Um, Wow, I'm actually puzzled about how he was able to remain under 20 minutes in this game. The captain, Roman Yossi, was not able to remain anywhere near 20 minutes. 28-29. That's a ton of minutes for the National Predators captain. 22-08 for Ryan McDonough. And, of course, Yossi McDonough also participated in three-on-three -three overtime quite a bit. When it comes to uh, special teams leaders, power play time on ice, it was Nyquist with 149, and then it was O'Reilly with 144, and Forsberg with 134, and the captain, Romeo, see 151. That's your power play time on ice leaders, your shorthanded time on ice leaders. Yakov Trenin doing an incredible job out there, 221, and then it was O'Reilly with 132 shorthanded time on ice. On defensive side of things, Dante Fabro, 223 shorthanded time on ice, and Stastny, 203 shorthanded time on ice. Both of those young players really really stepping up in that situation because when I talk about the rest of the things in the box score the power play for the Preds one of two and that's great but the penalty kill was two of two in this game and they looked exceptional especially 
in that third period late when Philip Forsberg was in the box and the PK really had to come up strong. Give a lot of credit to Stastny and Fabro for the work that they did along with Yakov Trenin out there on the rink tonight. 48.8% faceoff winning percentage. It's not going to do it. You got to be over 50%. And against a team like the Chicago Blackhawks, the Predators should have done better in the faceoff. 19 hits, not bad. 16 block shots, good. Six takeaways, not bad. Nine giveaways, too many. National Predators have been on the minus side of the takeaway giveaway battle for the last couple of games, and they've got to clean some of that up. They had a really sloppy first period, and then the third period unable to generate a shot on goal seemingly uh, for, uh, what, almost 12 minutes? Uh, that's they got to clean those areas up. Uh, if they were facing anyone that wasn't a last-place team or wasn't the Chicago Blackhawks, perhaps, or maybe the San Jose Sharks, uh, there's very few teams that the National Predators could have beaten tonight with the performance that they put up on the rink. But they were one goal better in the shootout, one save better, and uh, all that. So they did get the two points against the Chicago Blackhawks. So get out of there with the two points and head on. You know who's back in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck? It's Brian Baston from OnTheForeCheck.com. So happy to have Brian back on the show. He's got the charts you need to see and the numbers you need to know. He is, of course, the one and only Brian Baston. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Well, the second period may have had us on the edges of our seats, but after giving up three goals in just nine shots, a 33.3 save percentage, UC Soros and the Nashville Predators defense tightened up tremendously, taking the Hawks to overtime, then, of course, the shootout, where the Preds win a perfect three for three behind goals from Gustav Nyquist, Ryan O'Reilly, who also had a goal during regulation, and, of course, the game winner from Philip Forsberg. But what helped that defense tighten up so much? Well, there was one player more than anybody else who stepped up, and it happens to be yet another great game from a player whose future still feels pretty uncertain here in Smashville. The defenseman Dante Fabro is the topic of tonight's one big stat. Dante Fabro, seemingly in the NHL rumor mill every week for the last couple of seasons or so, is the former 17th overall pick in the 2016 draft for the Nashville and came to the Predators with justifiably high expectations. After a season in 2021-22 where he scored three goals and a career-high 24 points, Fabro has come back down to earth on offense, notching just two goals, four assists, and six points this season in 21 games played. But we all know better than to judge defensemen just by their box scores or sorting by points. That's only what Norris voters do. Let's take a deeper look into his defensive ability. Dante Fabro, according to Evolving Hockey's uh, goals above replacement metric, is the third best player on the Nashville Predators in even strength defense behind Roman Yossi and surprisingly Michael McCarron, and third overall in defense, including shorthanded. And this game was no difference. With just 11.1 minutes of time on ice this game, the second lowest among all seven Nashville defensemen. With Fabro on the ice at even strength, Nashville led in shot attempts 13 to nine, tied in shots on goal six to six, but most importantly, had a staggering 1.0 to 0.1 lead in expected goals, a game high expected goal percentage of 91%. That means that 91% of all the shot quality generated with Dante Fabro on the ice at even strength came from the Predators. And this isn't new. This is Fabro's 15th game with an expected goal percentage above 50%, meaning that more than half of the total quality generated on the ice at even strength with Fabro on the ice came from the Predators. This is his eighth game above a 70% and his fourth above 80%. In those 15 games, Nashville has only allowed 11 goals at even strength as well. Now, Dante Fabro may not have been the player most Predators fans imagined when he was taken 17th overall in the draft, but he's been one of the better defensemen for Nashville on this team this season, and when given the chance, he's done very well. If it was up to me, Dante Fabro would finish this season in Nashville, especially if he has more dominant games like he did tonight. And that's tonight's one big stat. Back to you, Charlie. Thank you so much, Brian. I sure do appreciate you being back in the trenches. You got the charts you need to see, the numbers you need to know from on the forecheck.com. He was the one and only Brian Bass. Now, listen, we've got a Barry versus Barry situation to close this thing out. We've got Barry Trotz, the GM of the Nashville Predators, versus Tyson Barry, current possibly soon to be former defenseman for the Nashville person. Now listen, over the last couple of days, we've all been following along as the headlines came out that Tyson Berry was granted 
his opportunity to request other teams, talk to other teams, and look for a trade. Now, this is something you don't hear a lot about here in Nashville, especially when it comes to the Predators camp. So it was kind of surprising to hear this much business being out in the open. Well, it turns out Barry Trotz was quite upset about that news getting out and uh, basically pointing the finger and saying that player agent or whoever is who leaked this and that Barry Trotz was very unhappy. Barry Trotz would continue on 1025 the game in his afternoon interview uh, talking about the Tyson Barry situation, talking about how the player has not adjusted. He's not played well. And frankly, he's not handled himself as a professional or very well. And that's in regards to the healthy scratch that he suffered as a really as of recently, we've seen other players like Tomasino and, of course, like Fabro get healthy scratch, come back and perform great. But apparently something went really askew with Tyson Barry, his agent and the GM of the Predators, Barry Trotz. So when it comes to Barry versus Barry, Trotz is going to be the Barry that ends up winning. I anticipate a trade coming up and that Barry Trotz will accept basically anything that he can get for Tyson Barry. The rumors of the New Jersey Devils are out there. Of course, the Devils could use a defenseman. There are plenty of other teams. Teams that could use an experienced defenseman that wants power play minutes and is seeking a bigger offensive role with the team. Uh, but the Nashville Predators don't seem to be the long-term home for Tyson Berry. I don't think he was going to be here after this season anyway. A trade was more than likely inevitable no matter how much other players seemed to like him or how much he had gotten along with the Nashville Predators bench and team up to this point. He's not getting along with the GM, and clearly that means he's not getting along with the head coach. I think he'll be moved on soon. When it comes to the battle of Barry versus Barry, it's going to be Barry Trots that wins this one, the rookie GM of the Nashville Predators. So I expect we'll see some roster movement coming up here very, very quickly with the Nashville Predators. So that's going to do it for Operation Ray 131. Brand new computer, brand new operating system, all kinds of new things here in the bunker. So a lot of new moving parts to get used to. We've really put in the hours and put in the work to upgrade all of our systems and get things where we needed to go. That's why we put on our formal bag chuckers jacket tonight thank you may stick taps to you as always for this incredible gift you and hal always appreciate you guys and appreciate what you guys do on the broadcast as well i am your host and captain crazy Joe Zonia. that's going to do it for show number 831 let's get out of the bunker and let's get everybody moving uh stick taps love and respect